Brian Windhorst, ESPN NBA senior writer, and uh, figured we'd have Wendy on to talk about the uh, new policies here, load management. Give me the highlights on this, Brian. How long has this been in the works? I think, uh, well, they've been trying to deal with this for a year or two, but really what's happening is now that they have the collective bargaining agreement done, which they got done uh, in the spring and summer, they finalized it in the summer, um, they're thinking about the TV deal, if you want the honest assessment. And the the TV deal, um, when you're trying to sell your wares, even though there is robust interest, they're going to do very well on it. Um, you don't want star players sitting out. And so that's what they're focused on. That is a driving factor in why they're enforcing this now. And they're negotiating over this next year um, and saying, hey, they're trying to really sell. I mean, anybody can sell the, the playoff games. Everybody wants in on those. But you're trying to sell Wednesday night games in December and, you know, potentially Friday night games uh, or Thursday night games in um, in in February. And if you can't count on your star players to play in those games, their value may be uh, somewhat less. And so that's a driving force. That's all. It's interesting. Adam Silver is basically with his comments saying that uh, they don't any longer buy the science that resting players means fewer injuries. Um, I question whether or not he would say that if they weren't almost also negotiating a TV deal, but it is relevant that he said that. All right. How does it work? How does it work? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How does it not work? Well, well, here's the thing. What Adam was saying is that not only were healthy players resting, players who were not injured being you know, put on the bench for national TV games. But he felt that it was almost like a certain stature that you reached. Um, you know, um, certain players in the league achieve a certain things where they get to control certain things on a team, when they might travel, where they might stay, uh, the ability to have a personal security guard or a personal trainer come from outside the team and work with the team. Um, there's certain perks that are afforded to a star player. What Adam basically was saying is that what he had noticed and the league had noticed is that there was a stature that came with, you're such a big star that we're going to arrest you. And he's just felt that that, that basically he used the words that got away from them. And now when you talk to players and agents about the resting thing, what they have said is that, It's not the players who are going in and saying, boy, that knee is sore. Boy, my back is stiff. I'm going to take this uh, this game off. That it's the team that says, listen, we've been tracking you with our tracking uh, software, and it indicates your load is 17% higher than desired, and so we're going to sit you tonight. And, you know, they hit the ping pong ball right back. So this is not being applied to to, uh, players. It's being applied to teams. The fines that are in place are not going to go to the player. They're going to go to the team. So we'll see. It's possible that a team is like, we'll pay the fine to protect our player. And I mean, I think that's a trial and error that's going to be, you know, examined throughout this season. Okay. But let's say Steph Curry has a sore hamstring. Can they prove that he doesn't have a sore hamstring if he's going to sit down? It's a very logical question. So what they're saying is, is that if they suspect shenanigans, that's my word. Uh, they can assign an independent doctor to go in there and, uh, you know, stretch Steph Curry's hamstring out oh and say, boy, God. that does seem sore. Now, will that actually happen? No. But are you suggesting that we could see an increase in back soreness or, uh, you know, I remember back in when I first started covering the NBA, uh, they would have to you don't even realize to have 12 players active at any one time. And you had to put the, the non players on the injury list. So the guys who weren't playing, they would put on the injury list. Everybody in the league had Achilles tendonitis or knee tendonitis. So could we see a, 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 an incredible increase in Achilles tendonitis? Yes, we could. In theory though, uh, if the, if the league expects that suspects that you're, you know, not doing you not being honest, They could investigate it and find you. The strange thing about this, Dan, not strange, the interesting thing is that they have designated 50 players as quote unquote star players. And they, their metric on it is interesting. 
if you were an all NBA player or an all-star in any of the last three years, you're quote unquote star players. But there's a whole bunch of teams that don't have any of these quote unquote star players. So if you're the Detroit Pistons, you can rest anybody you want at any time. And you're playing against a team potentially on the second night of a back-to-back that's got to play their stars, especially if it's um, involved in a, a certain set of circumstances. Victor Wembanyama, because he's a rookie, he applies to nothing. If the Spurs want to play him 27 games, uh, there's no fine for this. So there's donut holes in this strategy, and I don't earn this uh, plan. And I don't think – I think there's more fine-tuning to come. He's Brian Windhorst, ESPN senior NBA writer. Did the Spurs start this? trend many 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 years ago when they sat guys when they were going into Miami yeah and and the reason that was so surprising was they sat three guys all in one game for a finals rematch on TNT that Charles Barkley had been brought in to call on the sideline TNT had designated this game as one of its um big games of the early season and Popovich went right into punt formation and sent the guys back to San Antonio on a Southwest Airlines flight, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> they said, go to the airport, Orlando airport, stand in line with all the kids wearing Mickey hats and go to San Antonio. <laughs> and David Stern was so incensed that he fined the Spurs $250,000 before the end of the first quarter. No investigation, no whatever. David Stern issued a fine, which, you know, this was 2000, I think, 13. So 10 years ago, two hundred. 150 was, you know, it was not, it was a lot more than it is today. And, um, but he, 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 you know, because David recognized right out of the gate, he had to nip this in the butt. And so that's what's, you know, I remember that there was a game last year in Cleveland. Um, it was, I believe, a Friday night game. Uh, and it was Warriors at Cavs. When the Cavs announced their schedule, this was one of the prime games that they put on their schedule. The yeah. defending champion Warriors come in. And there was obviously many different um, of these iterations that happened throughout the season. But this was, I remember, red letter. And they charge a lot more for those games. You know, uh, those are, you know, deemed premium games. And the night before, the Warriors went into overtime in Boston. And as soon as that happened, I was like, I remember I had a friend going to the game. I was like, I got bad news for you. I don't think they're going to play. And sure enough, they got there. Curry, Clay, Draymond, I can't remember if Wiggins played. They all sat. And so, yes, that's what they're doing, but they're also doing it because I don't remember if that game was on national television, but there are instances where that has happened on national television. Um, I remember last year, one game, uh, Joel Embiid and, um, and uh, Nikola Jokic had a, a great game uh, in Philadelphia. Embiid made an admission of it, dominated Jokic. It was awesome. And then when they played again in Denver, Embiid sat. Yeah. to rest and i know as somebody who's heavily involved in the league i wanted i was very excited to see that game it was you know this close to being a finals preview uh the sixers didn't get it done but they could have been there and you know he sat and that's what they're they're trying to sell those games for billions of dollars and so they need to be look if joel Embiid's knee is really hurting him and he can't play he can't play but you know, they're they're looking to uh, to eliminate the word rest from the injury report. What about ticket insurance? I've been uh, preaching this for a few years, that if you're going to buy tickets, uh, that you pay a premium, but you're buying, you know, insurance that these star players are going to play. Is, is there a way that the, I don't know if the NBA gets involved in this, if it's like Seat Geek or something like that, but could you see where, because, you know, you have these Christmas Day games. You're buying tickets for your son or daughter to go to these games, and Steph Curry's coming to town, and you know there's no insurance there that these guys are going to play. That company would have declared bankruptcy with Jets tickets <laughs> this year alone, right? <laughs> Probably. Uh, in, in all honesty, uh, while there anecdotally is these, these remarkable stories uh, of you know the Cleveland fans getting short shrift in that case, I don't think the league cares as much about the ticket holders as they do about the TV deal. Oh boy. Um, because I, 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 um, I mean, I think that they want to help the ticket holders too. I don't think they don't, I don't think, I don't think it's zero, but I think the primary reason for this happening now is that now is when they're negotiating the TV deal. And I think it's a, a progress in the right direction. I uh, have no science or no data to say that it's prevented injuries or whatever. Some of these rest games, but I personally think, the devaluing of the regular season is a um, 
serious issue for the NBA. And if you continue to send a message to your fans and to your partners that the regular season is not important, they are going to believe you eventually. So again, they're trying to sell something that's very important, and they're trying to reinforce that it is important. I think that's what's going on. Good to talk to you again, Brian. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dan. Brian Windhorst of The Mothership.